Well, my name is Alex Crosby. I work for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and I work in the Division of Violence Prevention at CDC. My role there is uh, primarily as a medical epidemiologist, and I focus in the area of suicide and suicidal behavior prevention. Data is one of the foundations when we talk about the public health approach to addressing any particular condition or problem, and whether that's something like hepatitis, whether that's something like asthma, whether that's cancer or heart disease or suicidal behavior, we really need to understand the who, what, when, where of that particular issue. The data help us in understanding the extent of the problem, but it can also help us in understanding what are the factors that play a role in a particular issue. What are the risk factors? What are the protective factors? And especially when you talk about a multifaceted uh, condition, such as suicidal behavior, in which it can have many different factors that play a role in it. If we don't understand what the problem is, then we might be missing it when we try to develop some sort of program. One of the areas in which we've been able to help expand the amount of information that's available is the National Violent Death Reporting System. This is a system that's now expanded to 32 states in the United States. And, and one of the benefits of this system is it collects information from three primary data sources. It includes information from death certificates, includes information from medical examiners and coroners, and then also includes information from law enforcement. By putting together these three data sources, it gives us a much broader bit of information about what was occurring when someone died as a result of suicide. In Oregon, for example, um, the state had developed a youth-focused suicide prevention plan, which means they focused on the age group from 10 to 24. Children, adolescents, young adults was where they focused their suicide prevention activities. Once they had started collecting their violent death reporting system data, what they found out was actually the highest rates were among those who were older adults and actually found out that among the older adults that had died as a result of suicide, many of them had visited their primary care physician within the 30 days before they had died of suicide. They were able to come back to um, their decision makers and say, we need to really focus some programs on this particular population and those primary care providers. And what they were able to do is develop some materials for those primary care providers um, that helped them to better identify um, older adults that they were seeing, but also make sure that those primary care providers were well trained in regards to treating, especially clinical depression, um, and so that they could treat that better, identify those patients better, and then hopefully have some better outcomes as a result of decreasing suicide within their state among that older adult population. In the state of New Jersey, they also had looked at their violent death reporting system data and found out that the highest number of suicides were among working aged adults. They brought together three of the largest employers in their states and said, you know, we need to start looking at programs for you businesses that might help prevent suicides among this population, especially those in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. How can we work with you businesses to develop stronger employee assistance programs or other kinds of programs that focus on this particular age group. That's really one of the, the foundations, if you will, of collecting surveillance and monitoring information is that it's supposed to be information for action. You're supposed to be getting it into the hands of those people who are actually running and administering the prevention activity so that they can do something about whatever that problem is. So that when they take action, that action can be very focused.